but here we're going to launch this thing. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to our home bar seminar. We've moved this forward. Big changes here. <laughs> we're now in the second half of the year, officially beginning of the third quarter, summertime, post July 4th, school's out, time to get serious for those of us who are working. So we moved this podcast from 5 p.m. to 4 p.m. Wednesdays. It's because I really moved my networking event from Thursdays to Wednesday at 5.30. And I, I, I knew it didn't conflict with the actual call. It just conflicted with my drive time. So anyhow, thanks for accommodating us. If you are watching this on live streaming on uh, our social media platforms, Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube, feel free to put a comment in the comment box and we'll catch you live here. If you're watching us on replay, leave a message and we'll get back to you. Uh, I'm Bill Gross on behalf of my colleague and good friend. Yes, Patricia Castillo. Patricia Castillo and? Gustavo Segura, hello. Gustavo Segura. And we are, estamos aquí in Los Angeles y sur de California. Uh, hablamos de el negocio real estate. Si puede comprar una casa en inglés o en español. Nosotros estamos aquí para a su cerveza. A su cerveza. There you go. Cerveza. I had a cerveza yesterday, but I didn't have Modelo. I didn't have a Carta Blanca. I didn't have a Tecate. I had a Sam Adams in honor of July 4th. So Sam Adams is our least known founding father, but very important. Actually, prior to George Washington, probably is the, the match that lit the fire for the revolution. Very unknown, very uh, uh, under, uh, under well known uh, founding father. Anyhow, here we are, sober and ready to go, the day after July 4th. Though I will say that as soon as we're done here, I change and go to a networking event I host at a beer place to have more beer because I didn't have enough beer yesterday. Mm -hmm. So what's that do with home buying? Well, I don't know. We're human. We're here to help you. What's going on in the home market, Patricia? Patricia? It's not as busy as ever. Um, you know, I was out showing property this past weekend, and some of the areas that – years ago where it seems a little too far for people that live in LA, you know, that's really where the, they're able to buy right now. So those areas are becoming more and more attractive for buyers. And, you know, so for example, this is uh, Fontana and Fontana. Um, there was a probably, I mean, when I looked at that sign in sheet, there was about 40 families that had come through and this is a open house that is open for three hours. Right. We got there in um, the third hour of it closing. So there was about 45 minutes left. And I was just looking at the side of sheet thinking, wow, I hope all these people aren't going to be submitting offers. Right. But that's usually what happens. You have a lot of people come to the open house, especially lately, because it's the, you know, buyers have really come out in full force and um, looking for, you know, a property that's suitable for them. So just to give you guys an idea, um, so this is a cute house. It's a two bedroom, two bath. It's not a big home. It's under a thousand square feet, but that's exactly what my clients are looking for. And there's not a lot of two bedroom homes on the market. So in this case, there was about 40 different families that showed up on one day. The uh, listing agent received a total of 13 offers and wow. they're only going to counter the top three. So, I'm in the top three, so I'm waiting to actually hear back. Um, and yeah, it's just you know, it's a it's a very ex exciting time right now. But you also have to have all of your information together um, so that you are competitive, you know, and you are up to speed on the market and know what's out there. It's important to work with professionals that are consistent and going out and looking at properties to see what a realistic offer is. Right now we're seeing overbidding multiple offers um, and sometimes the highest price isn't the best. So it's also formulating your terms that are going to be favorable to the seller so that your offer can really be looked at. So that's where we're at. I actually just received a counter offer and it's not even for the price because our price was pretty competitive. Um, it's just regarding some other terms. So 
hopefully we will be accepted. But I was happy to hear that I was in the top three out of the three. Out of the 13, I mean. So it's competitive. A lot of negotiations happening. A lot of property tours. Um, there were open houses even yesterday on the 4th of July. So, you know, it's uh, it's a busy time right now. Yeah, that's my sense too. You know, I have a listing, actually you wrote an offer on one. We have 10 offers on it. And uh, we've been looking at the market for a little, a little bit over a week. Um, and same thing. And then, uh, and I'll just share with you, I just literally closed today a, a transaction where we had multiple offers and um, two of them, the real estate agents were really good. And, uh, and most of the other real estate agents, as a listing agent, my job is, is to not just to get the best offer, but to get the best offer that's going to close. And how you assess that, you look at the transaction, you look at the offer, you look at the contract, you look at the agent. I talk to the agent and I call the lender and pre-qualify them. Sometimes I push them to work with my lender or a lender I know like Gustavo. In this case, it was a really good agent. Even though she was newer and not so experienced, she knew her stuff and she had a really good lender. And as a result, we're actually closing early. We're, we're supposed to close July 15th and we're closed today. So, and I remember today I called the regulator for the closing and, and I said, you know, when I first talked to you, I could just tell you you're really good. You knew your stuff. Uh, it was a condo in an area that she knew really well and the price range and the product. And I said, it made a difference when I accepted the offer. And as a result, here we are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Knowing the market, um, every neighborhood is different. So you might drive down five minutes and think, you know, well, what's the difference here? But it may be an inferior area, you know, inferior product as far as the homes available in comparison to driving a mile or two, you know, north or south. You may be in a completely different neighborhood. Not every place is as nice as Downey, right, Patricia? <laughs> hey, I like where I live. It's a nice area. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, Gustavo, how about those interest rates? Yeah, I mean, we keep on battling that. Um, you know, about the end of May, uh, things started to kind of keep going up a little bit, and they continued through June, and, and here we are a little bit higher than expected. But, um, you know, we always talk about the inflation reports, being able to get that under control. They have been able to bring inflation down but the rates are still staying a little bit higher. You know, there's been a lot of contradicting reports coming out, which is pushing for that. Uh, part of those reports could be job reports, you know, the initial jobless claims, things like that. So the market still, you know, the, the, the market still feels like it's strong and, and it's keeping those, uh, those rates higher than usual. Um, the last inflation report that came out on Friday wasn't that big of a drop. It was a very soft uh, uh, move. Uh, but yeah, you can see here where we're, we're still hovering around 7%. Now these are averages. Um, so that's something to consider, you know, definitely check with your originator like myself to see what your scenario could bring. Uh, but they're definitely still staying a little bit higher than expected. And if your lender's quoting you much lower than this, they might be quoting you rates that they had available a few weeks ago that they may not have available today. So it's really important. The integrity of the lender is more important in a rising market like now. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times they might just assume that you, they're going to be charging you one point or two points. Right. Um, and then they quote you out on that. Pretty much a lot of these websites that you go on, there's going to be um, a, a point or two already built into that pricing because they want to make sure they advertise the best rate possible with right. a 25, 30 percent down. Right. So they're not going to advertise those three percent, three point five percent programs. Uh, because the rate is going to be higher than if you were paying two points. Right. So definitely, um, you know, make sure that you're not just going off of what's on the on the, on the main front website, uh, that you're checking it out, and then you know, that you're um, doing your due diligence and, and and calling someone, like I said, like myself, where we can look at your specific scenario and see what we can get you. Um, and, and, you know, the market is is moving in the right direction as far as activity. You can hear from Bill and and, and Patricia. Um, I'm also seeing on my side where the agents are coming back and, you know, they're starting to waive appraisal contingencies, right? Maybe some inspections are keeping certain things and we're going to 15, 16 day closings. So, um, it, it's getting a little bit more competitive in that sense. Um, and I'm pretty sure you guys have your feedback on that when they start waiving, 
um, inspections or, you know, any kind of appraisal uh, contingency there. Yeah. yeah. It's a little different market than it was uh, previously, but it's still pretty solid. I think that's the key thing is it's not what it was. It's what it is. And we have to you know play the cards we're dealt rather than uh, keep playing the cards don't work anymore. Yeah. At the same time, um, I see I'm seeing reports of inflation. I mean, sorry, of uh, uh, appreciation going up. So property value is going stronger. Right. Um, but the news sort of pitches it as it's less affordable to buy. Right. So um, I would say that, you know, the majority, two thirds of, of the of the uh, of the people own a home. So that's really good if your if your value of your home is going up. But of course, you know, the media kind of turns it around and said and puts it more into a negative of it, it, it's unaffordable. And, and I get why. But I, I saw this uh, analogy of, um, you know, when the stock market's going up, they don't say how, you know, it's so bad for those that can't buy those stocks, right? They say, yes, let's push on, you know, keep the stock market going up, right? Um, they get happy for that. Um, but on our side, I feel like there's always some negative um, aspect of it instead of good positive news. Yeah, true. What you mentioned about the starting to, you know, wave appraisals again. I mean, we saw that in the beginning of the pandemic, right? The first year, everything was being waived from, you know, loan contingency to appraisal contingency. We saw home inspections being waived, termite inspections being waived. So yeah. you're basically removing all of your protections as a buyer coming into the deal without even really knowing what you're buying. And so right now, one of the counter offers I just received, it's, which we had already waived our appraisal contingency because we're confident in the, in the home um, appraising to that value. Plus my buyer's putting down 75% of the price. So they're putting down a really good chunk of the, of the purchase price, but it states on here, you know, appraisal contingency to be removed and inspection to be done in seven, in six days, which is not, um, unreasonable you can you can do an inspection in six days maybe even five days but um you know it's also looking at the property and the condition if it looks like it's in good condition aesthetically that you know and looking at the roof and things like that that might be a good idea to shorten the time frame down but if it looks like one in your general home inspection might lead to other inspections you might want to be prepared to have those inspections done on the same day, if you're going to shorten your contingencies that much, so you can do a roof inspection the same day that you're doing your home inspection. And you can also set up your sewer inspection if you wanted to do that, because working in a time frame of five to six days for inspection is pretty short. Um, even if the property looks like it's in good condition, you know, so I usually, um, it's kind of, I talk to my clients about that to see how they feel about waiving that. But usually the general consensus is let's get a home inspection, then, but just shorten yeah. the time frame on it. So it's still favorable to the seller as opposed yeah. to waiting yeah, seven yeah. days the default. Yeah, I think, I think uh, um, you are saying, if I can, if I can rephrase it, sharpen your pencil get rid of the um, get rid of the contingencies you don't need limit the ones you need to what you need make sure you have the ones you need in there and right. I think oftentimes buyers will have multiple conditions they don't need well I, you know this protects me that protects me yeah you know, I'm wearing a belt and two suspenders well yeah but a, a seller's put off by you wearing a belt and two suspenders let's get down to one belt and we call pay attention to that one belt and so I generally try to urge people, um, yes, you like to have, you'd love to have an extra contingency or two if the seller's not paying attention if you're on the buyer's side. But at the same time, you want to make it attractive to them. We do have a question on the live stream uh, from LinkedIn. Uh, I think it's a first for this program, actually, a LinkedIn uh, watching the question, but we're glad to have you. How long do you think the type of market will last? I'm looking forward to buying and waiting until the conditions are better. Ooh, ooh, waiting until the conditions are better. When they be better than now? Because here's the problem. If the rates drop, there'll be a panic. It'll be hard to get a house. If rates uh, go up, um, you know, there might be less houses available because sellers might not want to put the house on the market. And if they go up, um, it could because inflation is going up, the price of the houses could be going up as well, possibly. 
So there's, unless you have a crystal ball, I have a crystal ball. It's right there. It doesn't really tell me much. I keep putting my hands over it and waving, but it doesn't say anything. But I would say to a LinkedIn user, you know, how long will it last? I don't know where it is. I think what I tell people every week is make your best decision on where you are now. Don't try to predict the future, but play the cards you're dealt the best you can. If you do that over time, I think you'll win. Patricia, what are your thoughts? How long is the market going to last? Well, I think it's, you know, it's basically um, along the same lines of what you just said. It's a lot of people are trying to time the market. How can I time the market so that I buy at the right time? But everybody's circumstance is different. So if you can afford the monthly payment, then right now would be a great time to buy. One of the reasons is because since the rates have gone up and they're expected to stay somewhere in the six, you know, six between six and seven percent range. Um, you know, most sub buyers have been priced out, so they're waiting as well. So if you're waiting, then once the rates start coming down, you're going to be have that much more competition, right? Because now there's a lot of other people that have been waiting as well that are also trying to time the market. Um, so we've said that, you know, before on this call, if the scenario makes sense for you to buy. Right now would be a great time to get into a property if you can afford the payment. And once the rates come down, you've already secured your home. And now all you need to do is refinance to lower your monthly mortgage payment. But at least you've already secured the home that you want to be in. Yeah. And um, to add to that, um, you know, there's a way to look at this with numbers as well. Um, I was just talking to someone about renting. And what they're spending right so they're spending thirty five hundred dollars in rent that's one hundred and twenty six thousand dollars in three years that's going out the window basically um if you're buying and say you're you're spending four thousand forty five hundred dollars in, in a home payment property taxes all that a part of that is you're paying down your loan you know part of that is getting um tax write-offs when you sell it, there's appreciation, it's coming back to you. So some of that money is gonna be coming back. So I do an analysis of like a rent versus buy. We take a look at the opportunity and we take a look at where you're at today. And then we can see if that is an affordable payment as Patricia mentioned, and then you can take a look and move forward with it because the numbers are showing right now that we hit sort of this bottom of the property values when they were coming down after COVID. And then now, uh, we're all going up over the last four months have been going up from January to March, uh, sorry, to April have been going up. So it looks like if we continue to have appreciation, like, 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 like Patricia mentioned and Bill, we're going to have good values. If rates come down here towards the end of the year, more, pro more people are going to want to get in. It's going to get more competitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I've been, um, advising my clients that have been, you know, we just posed escrow on one of our buyers that was, was starting to look at properties once uh, we were into the pandemic the first year, then the market got really heated, you know, conditions that we've never really seen before, interest rates and in the twos and threes. So there was a lot of competition. Um, and so it just, it became very, very hectic putting in offers, you know, almost every week, going to see properties on the weekends. And so this is what it looks like when it gets really heated and there's a lot of buyers out there looking at property. So you're going into an open house and, you know, you're surrounded by 20 people at least and everybody's there that really likes the house and they want to make an offer. And so you're standing there looking around thinking, okay, um, you know, you're already feeling that pressure. Like I'm going to have to be really competitive with my offer and with my price and the terms and so my client was feeling that way. So she had stepped out for a little bit and said, I'm just going to wait and kind of see what the market does. So here we are now, two years later, found her a property, just closed escrow a few weeks ago. And um, Gustavo was, you know, our lender on that. So we did a really good job on the financing and on the terms. There was also multiple offers on that property. Um, we overbid, of course, got accepted and you know, she's at a lower interest rate than her waiting, right? Because if she would have waited, now we're at seven, what is it, 0.02, I think, today. Um, 
back on May 26, we were at 7.14 for a 30 year fixed. So we're not sure exactly how the market's going to play out. The interest rates might stay this way for some time. So if you're looking to buy a home, you know, this is this is a good time to buy if you can afford the payment right now and at least secure your property. So now my client has secured her property, closed escrow, and now once the rates go down, she can refinance. But I think she was locked in right at 6%. Now we're at yeah. 7 So, you know, there's really no yeah. way to time the market. Well, there is and a way to time the market. It's just you don't know it until after it's moved. <laughs> which time was. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, so we're all busy. Multiple offers still going on. Buyers still looking. Buyers are looking for the market to improve. Who says if it's going to be better than it is today? There's no way to know that. You know, the ancient Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree was 100 years ago. The second best time is right now. So unless you can buy a house 100 years ago. Um, you know, I was watching a, a, a movie yesterday with my wife uh, from World War II and how the veterans who, uh, you know, uh, participate in D-Day, they had life insurance policies with a payoff of $10,000, which today sounds like enough for a funeral and a this and a that. But in, a, in, in that time, $10,000 bought you a beautiful home here in West LA with money to spare, probably money left over by a car and furniture and everything else. Um, so, you know, over time, everything goes up in price and including your house. And if ever rates go down, you have a chance to refinance going downward. So um, I think the best the best words I have is, do what's best for you today. Don't worry about the future. Uh, you can't predict it. You can just be prepared for it. Gustavo, final words there for somebody looking to buy a house. Um, get pre-approved. Take a look at your options. Like I said, either the rent versus buy, you know, where you're at now versus where you could be. Um, or even if you're already in, in this market and you're making offers, uh, like, like Patricia mentioned, you know, what does an overbid look like? So definitely know where you're at and what your finances are. Great. And uh, on that subject, I just want to share with you guys, where was it? I do a new live stream called the real estate humor meme stream. I've always wanted to do like a kind of a comedy show to show, you know how we, we all get pictures of funny stuff in real estate and uh, what do you do with it? And so I do a, a show live on Wednesday mornings for half an hour. Where all we do is go through memes that are family friendly and funny. I'm looking for it on the other screen here real fast to share with you guys. But one of the ones I shared today was on that topic. And get approved. Get approved. <laughs> yeah, that one. Did, did they show you that one before? One of my yeah, favorites. We saw it last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I, I do that one every week, I think, because it's a great topic. Okay, good. Final words, Patricia, what do you got for yes. us? Exactly. Us get approved. Um, you know, this is a really good thing to mention because one of the clients that I was talking to today was I'm thinking of renting for the next four to five years rather than buy and then see where the market's at in five years. Well, okay. So that's the scenario that Gustavo was working on today was the rent versus buy. And if that's something that you're considering, should I rent right now rather than buy? Let's just talk about it. It's better to have information so you're more informed and educated on the process and really seeing what those numbers look like for you. So feel free to reach out anytime. Fantastic. Well, look, I'm Bill Gross. This is uh, Patricia Castillo and Gustavo. <laughs> Segura, and we work as a team every uh, Wednesday at 4 p.m. new time. 4 p.m. Thanks for those of you who watched us. Uh, we got a smiley face. No, kind of, kind of a weird wink from somebody on uh, social media. I don't know what that means, but anyhow. We'll take a wink. I'll take whatever, you know, like or don't. Like it. If you watch this on, re on the replay, put a comment in, put a thumbs up. Love to talk to you if we can help you. Our social media and our phone numbers are here to contact us. Make it a great week. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Patricia. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Gustavo. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.